Did you know that traveling by train from New York to London within an hour might become a reality in the near future? That sounds pretty unbelievable, but a $20 trillion plan is in the works to make it happen. But what's this project really about, and how can a train even move that fast? We're about to find out, but first, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The big idea, a tunnel across the ocean. Imagine stepping onto a train in New York, sipping your coffee, and arriving in London before you can even finish watching a full episode of your favorite show. Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, believe it or not, some people think this could actually happen. The idea is simple yet ambitious, and that's to build a tunnel stretching beneath the Atlantic, linking North America to Europe via a high-speed Hyperloop system. This tunnel, running approximately 4,800 kilometers, would allow trains to travel at mind-blowing speeds, making what is currently a seven-hour flight into a trip that takes under an hour. But this idea is not brand new. The dream of connecting continents with a high-speed train has been around for decades, with various engineers and futurists proposing different versions of what such a project might look like. But until now, that technology to make it a reality simply didn't exist. And that's where Hyperloop technology comes in. The futuristic transport system, first popularized by Elon Musk in the early 2010s, works by placing trains inside low-pressure tubes, reducing air resistance, and allowing them to move at incredible speeds. While traditional high-speed trains are already fast, Hyperloop trains are expected to reach up to 4,800 kilometers an hour. At that speed, a journey across the Atlantic Ocean would take just 54 minutes, shorter than most of our morning commutes. But why build a tunnel like that in the first place? Well, the main reason is speed. Air travel, despite being the fastest mode of transport today, still has its drawbacks. Long security lines, delays, turbulence, and the time wasted at airports makes the actual travel experience longer than the flight itself. A Hyperloop train in a tunnel beneath the ocean would eliminate many of these hassles. Passengers simply board a train in the city center, bypass airport traffic, and arrive at their destination in record time. For businesses, this means faster trade and easier access to international markets. In fact, a company based in New York could hold meetings in London and return home the same day without even needing a hotel stay. Another major reason behind the idea is the potential for a seamless year-round travel experience. Unlike air travel, which is often affected by bad weather, this underwater tunnel would provide a stable and uninterrupted route. No flight cancellations due to storms, no turbulence, and no jet lag just smooth, high-speed travel across the ocean. And with climate concerns growing, this project could also be a greener alternative to flying. Planes rely on fossil fuels, but Hyperloop trains are designed to run on electricity, making it a more environmentally friendly option to long-distance travel. If realized, this tunnel would change the way people think about international travel forever. The distance between New York and London would feel as short as a train ride between neighboring cities. It's an idea that once seemed impossible, but with advances in technology, it's starting to look like the future of transportation. The big challenges. The idea of a tunnel connecting New York to London is as ambitious as it is exciting, but turning such a grand vision into reality is far from simple. While the thought of crossing the Atlantic in under an hour sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, the truth is there are enormous challenges that make this project one of the most difficult undertakings in human history. Engineers, scientists, and planners would have to overcome almost every obstacle imaginable, from the sheer scale of the project to the unpredictable nature of the deep ocean. One of the biggest challenges is the sheer length of the tunnel. At approximately 4,800 kilometers, this would be the largest tunnel ever built by a massive large. For comparison, the channel that connects England and France is 37 kilometers long, and that took over six years to build with thousands of workers and some of the most advanced engineering techniques available at the time. So if that relatively small tunnel took more than half a decade, imagine how long it would take to build something over 100 times the length. The sheer scale of the project would require an unprecedented level of planning, manpower, and resources. But time's not the only issue, as the environment itself poses another challenge. The Atlantic is one of the most unpredictable and extreme environments on Earth. Unlike tunnels built on land that typically face geological challenges like mountains and rivers, an undersea tunnel would have to deal with deep sea conditions, shifting tectonic plates, and the crushing pressure of the ocean. Some parts of the Atlantic reach depths of over 8,000 kilometers, meaning that any tunnel would have to withstand the kind of pressures that typically destroy submarines. Creating a structure that could survive those conditions for decades, even centuries, would require materials and engineering solutions that have never been tested at this scale. 
Then there's also the issue of maintenance. Even if engineers somehow manage to build the tunnel, keeping it in perfect working condition is a whole other challenge. Regular tunnels require constant maintenance, but one stretching across the ocean floor would be nearly impossible to inspect and repair using traditional methods. The extreme pressure, temperature fluctuations, and corrosive nature of salt water would make the tunnel highly vulnerable to wear and tear. Special robots and autonomous maintenance systems would likely have to be developed just to ensure that the tunnel remains safe for use. Another challenge is the risk of natural disasters. The Atlantic is no stranger to powerful hurricanes, underwater earthquakes, and shifting tectonic plates. While earthquakes are less frequent in the middle of the ocean compared to places like Japan or California, they can happen, and a strong enough tremor could potentially crack or even collapse parts of the tunnel, leading to catastrophic consequences. Scientists would need to figure out how to earthquake-proof a structure lying thousands of meters beneath the sea, something that has never been attempted at this scale. Then there's the problem of human safety. If something were to go wrong inside the tunnel, getting people out would be a logistical nightmare. Unlike a land-based tunnel where emergency exits can be placed at regular intervals, an ocean tunnel would be extremely limited in escape options. What happens if a train breaks down in the middle of the Atlantic? What if there's a fire? Evacuating passengers in an enclosed space thousands of kilometers from land would require technology and safety measures that currently don't exist engineers would have to design an emergency excavation system that allows people to exit safely even in worst case scenarios. But beyond the physical and environmental challenges, the project also faces serious logistical hurdles. Even with today's most advanced construction equipment, digging a tunnel under the ocean would be a massive undertaking requiring enormous amounts of materials, labor, and coordination between multiple countries. The tunnel would have to be built in sections, likely from multiple locations, and then connected perfectly without any errors. A small miscalculation in alignment could mean having to do entire sections of the tunnel again, adding years or even decades to the construction timeline. There's also the question of how to power and operate the tunnel. A project of this scale would require an enormous amount of energy, not just to build, but also to run daily. The trains inside would need a consistent and powerful energy source to maintain the high speeds necessary to make the trip worthwhile. Without a doubt, power failure in the middle of the ocean would be disastrous, leaving passengers stranded with no immediate way out. Reliable backup power sources and fail-safe mechanisms would need to be built into every part of the system to ensure constant operation. But that's not all, as the tunnel would also have to deal with extreme pressure from a different source, politics. Since this would be an international project involving multiple governments, reaching agreements on regulations, safety standards, and funding would have to be a lengthy and complicated process. Different countries have different regulations, environmental laws, and transport policies, and aligning them to fit into a single tunnel system would be a bureaucratic nightmare. Any disagreements could delay the project indefinitely or even prevent it from ever happening. And let's not forget about the cost. It's estimated that the tunnel would cost a jaw-dropping $20 trillion. And while no one knows where that money's gonna come from, Elon Musk, a major supporter of the idea, has claimed that his companies can build the tunnel for a fraction of the cost. But even at that, it would still run into billions. Even if all these problems could somehow be solved, there's still one final question. Would people actually use the tunnel? While the idea of traveling between New York and London under an hour seems incredible, would enough people be willing to use it to justify the cost and effort? Would it be safe for families to trust? Would businesses see it as a reliable alternative to airplanes? These are all questions that need to be answered before such a project could even be seriously considered. Ultimately, the dream of an underwater tunnel connecting two of the world's biggest cities is one of the most ambitious ideas ever proposed. But ambition alone isn't enough. These challenges are enormous, ranging from extreme environmental conditions to complex political negotiations. If humanity ever does manage to build this tunnel, it will undoubtedly be one of the greatest engineering achievements in history. But for now, it remains that, a dream, waiting for the right technology, resources, and vision to make it real. How would the tunnel be built? Now, you might be curious about how this tunnel could be built under the ocean, because it's not like digging a regular subway tunnel under a city. This is an entirely different level of engineering, because it would have to go under the Atlantic Ocean, one of the deepest and most unpredictable bodies of water on Earth. But engineers have come up with a couple of fascinating ideas, and both of them involve some of the most ambitious construction techniques ever imagined. One idea is a floating tunnel. Instead of being buried beneath the ocean floor, this tunnel would essentially be suspended underwater it'd be designed to float at a fixed depth, probably about 100 feet under the ocean surface, and would be held in place by strong cables anchored to the seafloor. 
Think of it as a giant, rigid straw running through the water, perfectly balanced between floating and sinking. This concept is known as a submerged floating tunnel. And while it's never been attempted on such a massive scale, it has been considered for shorter underwater passages in places like Norway. The floating tunnel would start with massive prefabricated sections built on land. These sections would be constructed in shipyards or large dry docks, similar to how submarines are made. Each section would be designed to withstand the immense water pressure and to seamlessly connect with other sections. Once completed, these giant tube-like segments, each potentially longer than a football field, would be carefully transported to their designated positions in the ocean. Special construction ships equipped with cranes and precision guidance systems would lower each segment into place. As each section is submerged, powerful hydraulic systems and stabilizers ensure that it aligns perfectly with the next one, creating a seamless and continuous tunnel. To prevent the tunnel from shifting due to underwater currents or storms on the ocean surface, it would be anchored to the seabed using enormous steel cables or concrete pylons. These anchors would be strategically positioned at intervals, securing the tunnel in place while allowing for slight movements caused by ocean currents. Engineers would have to calculate the exact tension and strength needed for these anchors to keep the tunnel stable while avoiding excessive strain that could damage the structure over time. The goal is to create a structure that's both flexible enough to handle ocean movements and strong enough to stay intact for decades. Inside the tunnel, a hyperloop system would be installed, allowing high-speed trains to travel through a near-vacuum environment. This is where the real futuristic technology kicks in. The tunnel would have to be completely airtight, with vacuum pumps continuously working to remove air from the tubes. Without air resistance, the Hyperloop pods could travel at speeds of up to 4,800 kilometers an hour, allowing passengers to make that trip from New York to London in less than an hour. The inside of the tunnel would also need to be equipped with emergency escape routes, ventilation systems, and power supplies to keep everything running smoothly and safely. Another idea is the seafloor tunnel, which would involve digging a massive trench along the ocean floor and placing tunnel sections directly on it. This method is more in line with how traditional underwater tunnels, like the channel between the UK and France, are built. The process would start with extensive surveying of the ocean floor to determine the most stable route. Engineers would then have to map out the seabed, identify areas of soft sediment, rock formations, and possible hazards like volcanoes or earthquake zones. Once the safe path is determined, the excavation process would start. Since digging under the Atlantic Ocean is impossible with traditional tunnel boring machines, engineers would require a combination of underwater dredging and controlled explosions to carve out a massive trench. Specialized dredging ships equipped with giant suction devices and robotic arms would remove sediment and debris, creating a level surface for the tunnel sections to be placed, and in areas with particularly hard rock, explosives would be used in a controlled manner to break up the material before dredging continues. Once the trench is ready, the prefabricated tunnel section, similar to those used in the floating tunnel concept, would be carefully lowered into place. These sections would be made of reinforced concrete or steel and would be sealed with watertight gaskets to prevent leaks. Each section would be positioned with extreme precision, ensuring they fit together perfectly as they're placed on the ocean floor, the gaps between the sections would be sealed with a special high-pressure grout, creating a completely waterproof connection. To keep the tunnel from shifting or being buried up by underwater sediment over time, it would be covered with layers of protective material. Engineers might use a combination of rock, concrete slabs, and other stabilizing materials to keep the tunnel in place. Additionally, a sophisticated drainage system would be installed to manage any water that might seep in, directing it to a designated pumping station that would remove excess moisture and prevent flooding. Inside the seafloor tunnel, the Hyperloop system would work just like it would in the floating tunnel concept. The difference is that this version of the tunnel would be resting directly on the ocean floor, which means it would be exposed to higher external pressure. To combat this, the walls of the tunnel would have to be incredibly strong, made from multi-layered materials designed to withstand the crushing forces of the deep sea. Both methods, floating tunnel and seafloor tunnel, come with their own advantages and challenges, but they share the same goal, to create a safe, fast, and efficient way for people to travel between New York and London in record time. The construction process would be a long and meticulous one, requiring years of planning, testing, and execution. Engineers would need to develop innovative solutions for problems that have never been encountered before, from dealing with extreme underwater pressure to ensuring the safety of passengers traveling at unprecedented speeds. Regardless of which method is ultimately chosen, the construction of this tunnel would be one of the most impressive engineering achievements in human history. The sheer scale of the project, combined with the cutting-edge technology involved, would push the boundaries of what's possible. 
If successful, it would redefine global transportation, making long-distance travel faster and more convenient than ever before. For now, the idea remains just that, an idea. But with advancements in technology and growing interest in high-speed transportation, it might not be as far-fetched as it seems. If engineers and scientists can figure out a way to make it work, we could one day find ourselves boarding a Hyperloop train in New York and stepping out in London in less than an hour. It may sound like science fiction, but so did airplanes once upon a time, and look at where they are now. How can the train travel so fast? Now, you may wonder, how can a train travel so fast that it cuts a trip from New York to London in under an hour? Well, the answer lies in the Hyperloop system. Unlike traditional trains, which rely on steel wheels rolling along tracks, Hyperloop trains move through low-pressure tubes with almost no air resistance. This system allows them to reach speeds that sound like something out of a science fiction movie instead of real life. One of the biggest obstacles to high-speed travel is air resistance. When a regular train speeds up, it has to push against the air in front of it, creating a drag that slows it down. But in a Hyperloop, the train moves inside a sealed tube where most of the air has been removed, creating a near-vacuum environment. With less air to push against, the train can move much faster without using as much energy. Scientists compare this to how an airplane flies at high altitudes where the air is thinner, allowing them to travel more faster and efficiently. Another key feature of Hyperloop technology is magnetic levitation, or maglev. Instead of rolling on wheels, the train hovers just above the track using powerful magnets. These magnets repel each other, keeping the train floating and eliminating friction between the train and the track. No friction means no wear and tear on the wheels, no loud screeching sounds, and no energy loss from the constant grinding of metal on metal. This levitation system is already being used in some of the world's fastest trains, like the Shanghai Maglev, which can reach speeds of over 268 miles an hour. However, Hyperloop technology takes it even further, aiming for speeds of over 3,000 miles an hour. Since Hyperloop trains don't have to deal with friction or air resistance, they can accelerate to extreme speeds in a matter of minutes. The goal is to make travel almost as fast as flying, but without the long security lines, boarding procedures, or turbulence that comes with air travel. Imagine stepping into a sleek train pod in New York, getting comfortable in your seat, and before you know it, you're in London, faster than a commercial flight and without the hassle of airports. Right now, the technology is being tested in different parts of the world. Companies like Hyperloop TT and Elon's Boring Company are working on developing and refining the concept. In 2020, Virgin Hyperloop successfully tested the Hyperloop pod with humans for the first time, proving that the technology is both safe and functional. Research teams are also studying how to make the ride smoother and more efficient while working on practical ways to build long-distance Hyperloop tracks. While a tunnel between New York and London is still a far-off dream, these advancements are bringing us closer to a future where high-speed vacuum trains could become a normal part of everyday travel. If these companies continue making progress, we could see Hyperloop systems connecting cities in the next few decades, changing how people move around the world forever. For now, though, there's no tangible timeline regarding when the project will kick off, let alone get finished. Which is understandable considering that challenges such as technology, manpower, and the environment and the sheer cost of $20 trillion still hasn't gotten figured out yet. Speaking of the cost, I already mentioned how Elon claimed his companies could do it for a fraction of the original estimate. But like I also said, even at a fraction, the cost of building such a project is going to run into billions. Time will ultimately tell. For now, we can just wait and see. And while we wait, head to the comments below and tell us if you think this project will ever become a reality. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.